Advice to a student from a foreign country. My advice to a student from a foreign country would be to talk, 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 talk as much as you can to the people who live in the place that you are visiting. Talk to them and practice your new language skills. Learn all the funny sayings and different words that make up their language. Talking is the only way to really learn a language. Listen to people, and talk to people. If you talk to people, you will also learn about their culture. I have a friend from Japan. His name is Nori. He often comes to see me just so that he can practice his English. He gets confused about words that sound the same but mean different things. He was asking me about the words "see" and "see." I explained to him that they do sound the same, but they are spelled differently, and they mean different things. Nori is learning some of our funny sayings from different people. One morning, I asked him how he was, and he said, "Alive and kicking." Another morning, when I asked him how he was, he said, "So so." He laughs about these strange sayings that we use. He is learning English quickly because he spends a lot of time with English-speaking people. He likes to have lunch with my friends and me because we ask him questions about his homeland, and he answers us in English. If he doesn't understand our questions, we spend time explaining what we mean to him. He says that he enjoys being here. He thinks that the people are very friendly. We enjoy speaking to him and helping him to learn English. We also enjoy learning about his country. It is enjoyable for us to meet new people and learn about new things. House. A house is divided into different rooms. In my house, there is a living room. There is a couch, two chairs, a coffee table, and a television set. In the living room. In the kitchen. There is a stove and a refrigerator. There is also a sink, and a dishwasher in the kitchen. There is a kitchen table and chairs. We eat most of our meals at the kitchen table. We have a dining room. There is a dining table and chairs in there. There is a washroom or bathroom. There is a toilet, sink, and bathtub in the bathroom. There is also a shower in the bathroom. We have three bedrooms. The bedrooms are upstairs. My brother's room, my room, and my parents' room all have beds in them. We also have dressers in our rooms. There are closets in all of the bedrooms. We keep our clothes in the closets. There is a basement in our house. We store things in the basement. There is a laundry room in the basement. There is a washing machine and a dryer in the laundry room. This is where we wash and dry our clothes. There is a garage attached to the house. We keep the car in the garage. You drive up the driveway and into the garage. We also have a front yard and a backyard. There is a vegetable garden in the backyard. There are some flowers and a tree planted in the front yard. Airplane ride. Tasha signed a piece of paper which gave her a chance to win a free airplane ride. She put her name, address, and telephone number on that piece of paper. A few days later, she got a telephone call. It was the man that was holding the ticket draw. Tasha didn't think she would win, but the man on the telephone said she did. She listened as the man told her where she would have to go to get her free airplane ride. She had to go near the town of Grimsby. She was allowed to pick a friend to go with her on the airplane ride. Tasha was so happy. She asked her twin sister Tanya to go with her. Tanya was very excited. Neither of them had been on an airplane before. When they got to the airplane center, Tasha and Tanya were nervous. They knew the airplane was small, so that meant only the pilot and them were going to be in the plane. 
Their mom took a picture of them beside the plane before they left. Tasha and Tanya hopped into the plane. They put their seatbelts on and got ready for takeoff. Tasha got to sit in the very front, right beside the pilot. Tanya sat behind Tasha. The girls laughed nervously as the plane started rolling down the runway. They went faster and faster, trees passing by quickly. There was a powerful surge, making everyone's head jerk back. The plane started lifting off the ground. Up, up, and away! They were up off the ground and flying high in the sky. It seemed as though they could get anywhere within a matter of seconds. They flew from Grimsby to Beamsville, where they saw their high school. Then on to St. Catharines, and then Niagara Falls. They even flew over top of their house. They took pictures of their house. They could see their pond from way up there too. The pilot asked Tasha if she wanted to fly the plane. Sure, Tasha said. So Tasha took the steering handle and began to fly the plane. She didn't really know how to fly it, so when she pulled the handle down, the plane shot upward. Both of the girls squealed. Tasha leveled the plane and flew smoothly from then on. Soon it was time to go back to Grimsby. The pilot took over again. We braced ourselves as the landing strip got nearer. The landing went smoothly with Tasha and Tanya beaming as they looked out at the ground. They hopped off of the plane, thanked the pilot, and ran to tell their mum about their wonderful experience. Do people have the right to smoke in public? My father used to smoke. He got very ill. The doctor told him that he had to quit smoking. My father tried for a long time to quit. It was very difficult for him. Smoking is an addiction. After many months, my father finally gave up smoking, but he still craved a cigarette once in a while. He says that quitting smoking is the hardest thing that he has ever done. When my father did smoke, he smoked everywhere. He smoked in restaurants, stores, and many public buildings. Now you are not allowed to smoke in a lot of public places. When my father smoked, the rules were not so strict. People could smoke just about anywhere. It really wasn't fair to the people who didn't smoke. Their clothes always smelled like smoke, and they breathed in secondhand smoke. Some people think that the secondhand smoke is actually worse for you than if you smoke yourself. People would smoke in their houses, and very young children would inhale the smoke that was in the air. Some people still smoke in their houses, and their children breathe in the smoke. Some restaurants have areas for smokers and non-smokers, but usually the smoke drifts from one area to the other. There are some businesses that have banned smoking altogether. Personally, I think that smoking in public places should be completely banned. I don't think that I should have to breathe in another person's smoke if I choose not to smoke myself. It wouldn't be fair for a non-smoker to get lung cancer because they had to be in a place where smokers were allowed to light up. I know that smoking is a powerful addiction and that it is very difficult to quit, but smokers should restrict their smoking to places where there is nobody else around. Lung cancer is an awful disease. Nobody should have to suffer with lung cancer. People should be educated about the dangers of smoking. Smoking should be banned in public places, but eventually, I would like to believe that fewer people will smoke. It would be nice to live in a smoke-free environment. Easter. Traditionally, Easter has been one of the most important holidays of the Christian religion. For Christians, the Easter holiday celebrates the death of Jesus Christ, who died for the benefit of all people. 
The exact date when Easter is celebrated is different each year, but it is always held in early spring, during March or April. There are two very important days that make up the Easter holiday, which occurs during the spring season. The first of these days is called Good Friday. Christians recognize Good Friday as the day when Jesus suffered and died on behalf of humanity. The second of these days is called Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday occurs two days after Good Friday. Christians celebrate Easter Sunday as the day when Jesus rose from the dead and went to heaven. For Christians, Easter is the most solemn holiday of the year. Many people attend church services on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday. Easter is also a time for celebration. Some Easter traditions come from old springtime festivals that existed even before Christianity. One of the traditions associated with Easter is the painting of Easter eggs. People take chickens' eggs, make them hollow, and then paint them with beautiful colors. Some people paint very beautiful and complex designs on the Easter eggs. Another Easter tradition is the Easter bunny. According to tradition, the Easter bunny is a magical rabbit that visits the homes of children on the night before Easter Sunday. The Easter bunny hides chocolate candies shaped like eggs throughout the child's house. On the morning of Easter Sunday, the children must search throughout the house to find these many hidden treats. The Easter holiday is an important time, both as a religious holiday and as a celebration of springtime. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home, without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house, and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows. I think we'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook, and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear! I hear dad yelling. Let's go. I haven't even finished packing.
included an adopted brother and a number of foster children, too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun, and there were some times of tears, too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. The Zoo My class took a trip to the Toronto Zoo. I had a wonderful time there. My favorite animals were the lions. They look very powerful and strong. They say that the lion is the king of the forest, and I think that title suits him. The monkeys were funny. They were looking at us just as much as we looked at them. They were swinging from branches and doing tricks to impress us. There was a baby monkey that was clinging to its mother's back. It was very cute. The tigers were pacing back and forth. They seemed restless. The stripes on a tiger are very beautiful. We watched the tall giraffes as they nibbled leaves off the tallest trees. We spoke to a colorful parrot that spoke back to us. We saw exotic animals that we had never seen before. Some of them were very strange. There were different types of bears there. There were black bears. I saw a black bear once when I was camping up north. We saw polar bears. Polar bears are white. They like the cold. We even saw panda bears. One of my friends bought a toy panda bear from the gift shop because she thought that the pandas were so cute. We saw slithery snakes. Some of the snakes had very bright skins. Most of the girls were afraid of the snakes. The zookeeper was looking after the snakes, and one of them hissed at him. He has to be very careful when he works with the snakes. The last thing that we saw at the zoo was the elephant. He was enormous. He looked at us, then he raised his trunk and made a loud sound. It made us jump. Career Choices What do you want to be when you grow up? There are so many things that you can be. You might want to work in the field of law. You could be a police officer. You could be a judge or a lawyer. Maybe you'd like to work in the food industry. You could be a cook or a waitress. You might want to manage a hotel dining room. Perhaps you would want to do room service in a hotel. You could be a chef and make fancy meals for people. Maybe show business is what you'd like to be involved in. You could act in television shows or movies. You could sing or play an instrument in a band. If you like to help people, you could go into medicine. You could be a doctor or a nurse. You might be a surgeon and operate on people. There are other jobs in the field of medicine, too. You could be an x-ray technician or a lab technician. It takes a lot of education to be a doctor. Maybe you would rather be a teacher. You could teach in a primary school or a high school. If you don't want to work with children, you could become a professor at a university. There are hundreds of other jobs to choose from, too. You might want to fix cars or work in a store. You could be a dentist or a veterinarian. You could be a janitor or a zookeeper. There are so many jobs that I just can't name them all. Maybe you'd like to be a minister or an organist at a church. You could be a babysitter or a shop clerk. You might be interested in being an astronaut or a baker. You could work in a bank or at a shop. You could work on a construction crew and build roads and houses. Maybe you'd rather decorate the houses, so you could become an interior decorator. You could cut hair or be a driving instructor. The list is endless. There are even jobs that you may never have heard about. The choice is yours.
You just choose whatever you want to be and do your best to become that. I could go on forever. You could work in a library. You could be a factory worker or a fisherman. You could make clothes or build bridges. You could wash windows or be a bricklayer. The possibilities are endless. When I grow up. I have been thinking about what I'd like to be when I grow up. There are so many choices. I could be a principal, like my father. I could be a teacher. I like animals. Maybe I should be a veterinarian. My cat just went to the veterinarian to get her shots. I don't think my cat was too happy to be there. I could be a farmer and grow vegetables. Maybe I could be a doctor and cure people. If I was good enough, I could be a famous sports person or a singer. I could be an actor on television or in the movies. Maybe I would like to be a policeman or a fireman. I could rescue people. I can play the piano. Maybe I should be a musician. I could be a lawyer. I sometimes watch shows about lawyers defending people. Lawyers have to be able to speak well. I could be a carpenter and work with wood, or I could be a welder and work with metal. There are just so many jobs. I could work in a restaurant. I could cook food, or I could serve food. I could be an airline pilot or the captain of a ship. I could be a repairman or an artist. The world is full of jobs. Some of the jobs require a lot of education. Some require a little bit of training, and some require a lot of training. It's all up to me. I can be whatever I want to be. Thanksgiving, an important holiday in North America, is held during the fall or autumn season of the year. This holiday is called Thanksgiving. At this time of year, people join with their relatives to reflect upon their good fortune. Thanksgiving is a holiday that has a long history in North America. It was first celebrated when English settlers arrived in the eastern part of what is now the United States during the 17th century. When they survived the first hard year, they celebrated and gave thanks to God. They invited some of the native people to their Thanksgiving celebration because the native people had helped them to survive during the hard winter. The tradition of celebrating Thanksgiving continued and spread throughout North America. Each fall, during the time of the autumn harvest, people celebrated Thanksgiving. They gave thanks for the food of the harvest and for all the good things in their lives. Today, the tradition of Thanksgiving celebration continues. Families gather to eat a large bird called a turkey. They also eat pumpkin pie. This is a sweet dessert that is made from a large orange vegetable that grows on the ground. In the United States, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, but the following day, Friday, is also a holiday. And then comes the weekend. In Canada, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the second Monday of October. The reason for the earlier celebration in Canada is that the weather is colder than in the United States. This means that the harvest happens earlier in Canada, so Thanksgiving is held at an earlier date. But in both countries, Thanksgiving is a very pleasant time of year. Roommate wanted. Spacious two-bedroom apartment with kitchen facilities, on the bus route to Brock University. Looking for a quiet female roommate. Must be a non-smoker. Available from September one. Three hundred dollars a month. Hydro was included. Call Barb after five. Nine zero five one 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 one. For sale. Ten-speed men's bike for sale, excellent condition, one hundred dollars or best offer. Call Fred, nine zero five one 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 
one one. Apartment for rent. Three bedroom apartment in the downtown area, four hundred and fifty dollars a month, within walking distance to stores and bus route. Utilities not included. Call nine zero five one 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 one. Please leave a message on the machine, and I will get back to you. Roommate wanted. Responsible, quiet roommate wanted to share two bedroom apartment. Some furniture included. First and last month's rent required, three hundred dollars a month. Utilities included. Call before six, nine zero five one one one, one 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 one. Ask for George. Help wanted. Friendly, reliable person wanted to work part-time hours at shoe store. No experience necessary. We will train you. Please leave resume at Friendly Feet Shoe Store, 34 Main Street, Niagara Falls. For sale, textbooks for sale. Included are second year English and American history texts, excellent condition. For complete list of texts, call Marie at nine zero five one 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 one. Any time after five. Upper half of duplex for rent, within walking distance to Brock University, two bedrooms and balcony, laundry facilities in basement, very spacious and clean, hydro not included, references required, seven hundred dollars per month. Call nine zero five one 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 and ask for Mr. Bridges. For joking, joking is good. Jokes can be very funny. Jokes can also be hurtful. Jokes can be tasteless too. It is not an easy thing to find jokes that do not offend anyone. Some jokes make fun of different races. Those jokes are not funny. They are hurtful. It is not right to tell racist jokes. Many jokes use bad language or are about questionable subject matter. These jokes are also not acceptable. Many people are highly offended by rude jokes. What some people find funny, others will not. Comedy is a very personal thing. Some people like slapstick comedy. That is the kind of comedy that the Three Stooges use. Some people like very subtle humor. Some people will laugh at just about anything. Sometimes it is not appropriate to laugh, but you feel like laughing anyway. Did you ever see anyone fall down? Did you feel like laughing when they fell down? You were probably worried that they had hurt themselves, yet the way that they fell was so funny that you felt like laughing. It's not funny when someone falls, but you can't help but laugh even though you try to hide it. Jokes and comedy differ from culture to culture. Many people from other countries come here and don't understand our comedy. Jokes and comedies are often geared toward our environment. Sometimes comedians make fun of the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, like going to the bank or going grocery shopping. We can all relate to that. Being a comedian is not an easy job. Telling jokes and making people laugh is extremely difficult. Jokes are fun, and they are funny if they are good. Jokes can get you into a lot of trouble if they are inappropriate. And sometimes they're just not funny, and nobody laughs. Here's a joke: Why does the cow wear a bell? Because its horns don't work. Do you get it? Do you think it is funny? Well, maybe it's not that funny. I told you that it was difficult being a comedian. The middle child. I am the middle child of the family. I think it is nice in some ways. I have an older sister from whom I can borrow clothes from if she lets me. I get to meet my older sister's friends, although sometimes they think that I am too young to be with them. I have a younger brother. He is cute, but sometimes I have to babysit him. There are good things and bad things about being the middle child. My sister is the eldest child. She was the first child. 
so she spent time alone with my parents. She got lots of attention when she was first born. They took lots and lots of pictures of her. All her clothes and toys were brand new. I got her hand-me-downs. My parents were the strictest with her. They had lots of rules for her to follow. She is the first child, so they want her to be perfect. My younger brother is the baby of the family. I think that we all spoil him. We let him get away with some things that he shouldn't get away with. His room is always messy, and my mother never gets mad about that. She gets upset with me if my room is messy. She tells me that I'm old enough to keep a nice, clean room. It's no good thinking about which position you would like to hold in the family. You really don't have a choice about that. I think I like being the middle child. I can relate to my older sister and my younger brother. Yes, I think the middle is probably a good place to be. Walk a mile in my shoes. Have you ever heard the saying, walk a mile in my shoes? I think it's a very good saying. Do you know what it means? It means that before you judge someone, you should put yourself in his or her position. For example, if someone was running in a race and they did very poorly and came in last, it wouldn't be fair to say, oh, he's just a terrible runner. You would have to look at all the circumstances that made the person lose the race. Maybe they pulled a muscle in their leg the day before. Maybe this is their very first race. Maybe they are not in good form because something isn't right in their lives. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. If someone was very quiet at a party, you couldn't just assume that they weren't friendly. You don't know what is happening in their lives. They could be feeling ill, or they might have just had a bad experience. Nobody can know exactly how another person feels. Even if someone tells you what he or she is experiencing, you still won't fully understand what is going on inside the other person. Everyone perceives and feels things differently. To walk a mile in someone else's shoes is to try and understand things from that person's perspective. We are all shaped by the events that have taken place in our lives. No two people have gone through the exact same things. So, before you are quick to judge someone, stop and think about what it is that they might have gone through. You won't always understand why people do what they do, but you can try to understand and put yourself in their position. Thanksgiving We are having Thanksgiving at our house. My whole family is coming. My parents bought a turkey. It weighs 30 pounds. It takes a long time to cook. My mom wakes up early to cook the turkey. I clean the house with my dad. The house smells good. We help mom in the kitchen. I peel potatoes and carrots. My dad makes pumpkin pies. My mom cooks squash. I help my mom make stuffing. I mix the bread and spices. We make good stuffing. It goes inside the turkey. We put on nice clothes. I set the table. My dad carves the turkey. My mom makes the gravy. Our relatives arrive. We say thank you for all we have. We eat and eat. It is a good Thanksgiving. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store, and I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. 
I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef and sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section, where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta, such as macaroni and spaghetti. And of course, you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. Joe's first car. Joe is eighteen years old. Joe works at McDonald's. Joe saves all his money. Joe has twenty-five hundred dollars in the bank. He wants to buy a sports car. Joe starts to look for a new car. Joe looks in the newspaper. Joe looks in magazines. Joe finds a car he likes. Joe goes to see the car with his dad. He really likes it. Joe doesn't have enough money. Joe's dad tells him to keep saving his money. Joe wants this car a lot. Joe asks his dad to help him. Joe and his dad make a deal. Joe's dad will lend him the money. Joe must work hard. He must pay the money back to his dad. Joe is very happy. Joe owns his first car. Advice. Sometimes my mother gives me advice. She tells me to save my money for a rainy day. She says that I should eat my vegetables if I want to be strong when I grow up. She says that you reap what you sow. I didn't know what that one meant, so I asked her. She said that if you are good to people, they will be good to you. If you do bad things, then bad things will come back to you. My mother is always giving me advice. She says that a penny saved is a penny earned. I am still thinking about that one. Some of these things are difficult to understand. My mother is very wise. She says that she has learned from her mistakes. She tells me that she would like me not to make mistakes, but she says that everyone does make mistakes. The important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. My mother says that nobody is perfect. My mother tells my sister that time is precious. My sister wastes time, and my mother doesn't like that. My mother tells me to be true to myself. She says that I should not follow the crowd. I should listen to my own conscience and do what I think is right. She says that it doesn't matter if you fail at something. The important thing is that you try. If you've done your best, then that is all that matters. I listen to my mother. I think she gives very good advice. My mother has a lot of common sense. I hope I am as wise as she is when I have children of my own. Sometimes I wish that she would not give me so much advice. I think that I know what I'm doing, but in the end, I always remember what she has said, and I try to live by the standards that she has set for me. Take the advice that your parents give you; they only have your best interests at heart. Early morning. Yawn. I'm so tired. 
I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mom has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl, she says. It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mom yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. Okay, I'll get up, I shriek. The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face, and then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal anymore. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye bye. My house. I live in a house. My house is small. My house has two bedrooms. My mom and dad sleep in one bedroom. My sister and I share the other bedroom. My house has a kitchen. My mom and dad cook dinner there every night. My house has a living room. My family watches television there every night. My house has a big bathroom. My house has a lot of closets. My house has a basement. My dad has a workshop in the basement. My dad makes wood furniture. My house does not have a second floor. My house has a garage. My house has a big backyard. My backyard has a maple tree. My backyard has a swimming pool. My backyard has a vegetable garden. My family likes our house. The office. Some people work in an office. There are special tools that people in an office need to do their work. There is a computer in the office. There is a telephone. Most of the time, the secretary answers the telephone. The secretary sits at a desk. The secretary has pens and pencils on the desk. The secretary writes on a notepad. Some other things that you would find in an office would include the following: a stapler to staple pages together, a photocopier to copy pages, a pencil sharpener to sharpen pencils. A water cooler where the employees could get a drink of water, a hole punch to make holes in sheets of paper, and liquid paper which is used to blank out errors on a page. Some offices have many employees in them. All of the employees have their own desks. Other offices just have one person at a desk. In some offices, there is a secretary or a receptionist, and then there is the boss in another room. There are often many important papers in an office. Important papers can be called documents. You might have to sign a document or fill out a form in an office. Some offices have bookshelves filled with books. The books are filled with information that the people in the office need. You will have to visit an office sometime. Maybe it will be a doctor's office or a lawyer's office. There are many different types of offices. I want to dye my hair green. Many of my friends have dyed their hair different colors. 
I don't mean normal hair colors like brown or black. My friends have dyed their hair orange, purple, and blue. I told my mother that I would like to dye my hair green. I explained to my mother that I would only use food coloring. The green would not last forever. My mother said that dyeing your hair was a silly fad. She said that I would not look good with green hair. I said that if I couldn't dye my hair green, maybe I could get a nose ring. My mother said no. I said that maybe a tattoo on my arm would be nice. My mother said, "No way." My mother said that she did some crazy things when she was a young girl. She said that she used to iron her hair to make it straight. That sounds quite boring to me. My friend Joan came over. Her hair is dyed bright pink. My father said, "Nice hair, Joan." I don't think that he really meant it. My mother says that when I am an adult, I can dye my hair whatever crazy color I like. But for now, she would like me to leave my hair its natural color. I tried to tell her that all my friends were doing it. My mother asked, "If all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you do it too?" I said, "No. I think I'll have to wait to have green hair. But maybe by the time I'm old enough to dye my hair green." I won't want it that color. My mother says that fads change all the time. One day something might be popular, and the next day it's not in style at all. I'll just have to live without green hair for now. I wonder what the fad will be next month. If I found a magic lamp. If I was walking down the beach one day and I happened to bump my toe on a magic lamp, I would pick it up. And rub it. If it was a real magic lamp, but I don't believe that there really is a magic lamp, a genie would pop out in a cloud of smoke, and he would call me master. He would say that he would grant me three wishes. I would have to think very hard about those wishes because I wouldn't want to waste them. I don't think I'd want millions of dollars. Money doesn't buy happiness, or so they say. I might wish for good health, because if your health isn't good, you won't be able to enjoy anything. Some people might wish for beauty, but beauty is only skin deep. Some people would wish for a mansion, or a beautiful car, or a big boat. I don't want any of those things. Some people would want fame. Some people would want talent. Some people would wish for happiness. That might be a good thing to wish for. Yes, maybe I'd wish for health and happiness. But what would my third wish be? I could wish for something enormous, something global. I could wish for world peace. That would be a wonderful thing if somebody could grant me that. Yes, that would probably be my third wish. It's too bad there aren't any genies inside magic lamps. I won't get my three wishes. I can still work toward getting my wishes. I can eat well and exercise to stay healthy. I can be involved with a lot of things and be with my friends to stay happy. I can volunteer my time to different organizations to help achieve world peace. I can do my fair share in my community to help others. That's how I can get my three wishes, not through a magic lamp. I can only get what I want through self-determination and hard work. That is the key to getting your wishes fulfilled. Emotions. Do you ever think about your emotions? What kinds of things make you sad? I get sad when I get a bad mark in school, or when someone that I like moves away. I sometimes see sad movies that make me cry. I don't like to be sad. I don't like to have a frown on my face. 
I like to be happy. I'm happy most of the time. Parties make me happy. Being with my friends makes me happy. Lots of things make me happy. If someone tells me a joke, I laugh. I enjoy laughing. Funny movies make me laugh. I think that people look the best when they smile. What kinds of things make you mad? I get mad when my brother breaks one of my toys. I try not to show it when I get mad. My parents get mad at me if I come home late. I don't think anger is a good emotion. It is best to stay calm and talk things over. Emotions come from inside you, but they show on your face. People can tell when you're mad or sad or happy. I prefer to look happy. Sometimes I even smile when I'm feeling sad, and the smile makes me feel a little better. Learning to dance. I went to England with my mother. She used to be a singer in a band. We went to the hotel that she used to sing at. It was a big fancy hotel. Some of the people that she knew when she sang in the band were still there. They remembered my mother, and they had a good time talking to her and remembering old times. Many people told me that I looked like my mother. In the hotel, they had a fancy hall where they had ballroom dancing. I am not used to that kind of dancing. I always dance to rock music. A man told me that he would teach me how to dance. It looked very easy. I held one of his hands and put my other hand on his shoulder. He told me exactly how to move my feet. I was very clumsy and I stepped on his toes.
cameras who wanted to take her picture. A princess would have no privacy. Even in her own palace, there would be servants around, so she would never really be alone. If I were a princess, I would worry about security for my family. Sometimes, people who are in high positions are threatened by other people. That would be a worry. I'm not so sure that being a princess would be all that much fun. I think it might be better to be just a normal person like me. I don't have to worry about looking wonderful all the time. People don't follow me around and take my picture. Whenever you see a picture of a princess, she is smiling. I wonder if she's smiling on the inside, or just smiling for the camera. The trunk in the attic. Last month, my grandmother asked me if I could help her to clean out her attic. I was happy that she asked me. My grandmother says that her attic is full of junk. I think that her attic is full of treasures. I helped her to dust and vacuum the attic. I pulled and pushed around boxes and crates. I helped her to wash the floors and walls. My favorite thing that I did was to sort through the old trunk that she had up there. The trunk had a rusty latch on it. It was a bit difficult to open, but my grandmother got a knife and pried the latch open. The trunk was full of all kinds of things. There were lots of clothes. Some of the clothes had been my grandmother's. There was a blue velvet dress that she had worn to a dance when she and my grandfather were dating. It was a beautiful dress, but there were a few moth holes in it. There were some of my mother's old clothes. There was a pair of bell-bottom slacks that had bright flowers on it. I couldn't believe that my mother had ever worn something like that. There were some of my mother's old report cards. Some of her marks weren't very good. I had fun reading the report cards. There were photographs. There was a picture of my grandparents holding my mother when she was a baby. There was an old baseball glove that one of my uncles had owned. There was even one of my old dolls in there. One of her legs was missing. My grandmother said that I was rough on my dolls when I was little. I should have taken better care of my toys. There was even some old jewelry. I tried on some of the old clothes and jewelry. I told my grandmother that I liked looking through old things. My grandmother told me to keep whatever I wanted. She said that it was all junk. I still say that her trunk was full of treasures. The garden. The garden is very interesting. I sometimes go outside, and I watch all the things that go on in the garden. It smells wonderful in the flower garden. There are red, white, pink, and yellow roses that have a sweet smell. I watch the bees as they take pollen from the roses. There are tiny bugs that live on the rose bushes. My mother tries to get rid of the little bugs, but it is difficult to get rid of them. She is glad to see the red ladybugs who eat the little bugs. The birds like the sunflowers. They like to eat sunflower seeds. There is a bird bath in the garden. The blackbirds and swallows go in there to take a drink or have a bath. I sometimes see a robin or a blue jay in there too. In the dirt, there are little holes where the ants go in and out. The ants are hard workers. I watch them as they work together as a team to bring food to their nests. There are snails in the garden too. They carry their homes on their backs. They move slowly and leave a silvery trail as they go. They eat the leaves from my mother's plants. My mother also has vegetables growing in her garden. She grows green peas. We like to pick those and eat the peas raw, right out of their pods. She grows lettuce and tomatoes too. We have so many tomatoes that we always give some to our neighbors. 
My mother sends us outside to pick lettuce and tomatoes whenever we have a salad. My favorite vegetables are carrots. Their tops grow above the earth, but the carrots are below the dirt. When you pick them, you have to pull the carrots out from under the soil. Weeds also grow in the garden. After a good rainfall, it seems that the weeds just spring up. I pull the weeds out by their roots so they won't grow back. Weeds choke the good plants, so we don't want them in our garden. Gardening is a good hobby. You get fresh air, sunshine, and exercise. You even get beautiful, colorful flowers and nice fresh food. Going camping. The Bright family went camping on the weekend. The Bright family went to Silent Lake. The Bright family left on Friday. They camped for three days. The Bright family brought a big tent. They brought a lot of food. They brought insect repellent. The Bright family had a campfire on Friday. They roasted marshmallows. They sang campfire songs. On Saturday, they went canoeing. On Saturday, they went fishing. On Saturday, they went swimming. They went hiking on Sunday. The Bright family saw many birds. They saw blue jays. They saw hummingbirds. The Bright family saw many animals. They saw. Clip bunnies. Everybody is here. Everybody has an Easter basket. The Easter egg hunt can start. Everybody must close their eyes. One, two, three, go. Samantha finds an Easter egg. The Easter egg is behind a table. She puts it in her basket. Tracy finds a chocolate Easter bunny. It's under the couch. 
Tracy puts it in her basket. Sydney finds a chocolate Easter bunny too. It's in front of the television. She puts it in her basket. Everybody finds lots of chocolate. Everybody shares their chocolate. Samantha, Tracy, and Sydney love Easter. Easter. Hot and cold. I notice that whenever it is summer, people complain about the heat. But whenever it is winter, people complain about the cold. It seems that people are never satisfied. I don't like the winter. It is usually much too cold for me. My teeth chatter, and my fingers turn numb whenever the weather gets cold. It is hard for me to warm up once I start to freeze. I try to wear layers of clothes, but winter winds go through my clothes no matter how much I wear. My feet feel like they are blocks of ice on a cold January day when I walk home from school. I would not like to live in a place that had cold climate all year long. I am not comfortable when it is too cold. I like the summer. Some people say that it is hot and sticky in the summer, but I don't mind the heat at all. I love to feel the warm sunshine on my skin. I like the freedom of not having to wear heavy coats and boots. I am the happiest when there is a slightly cool breeze that comes along to refresh you on a hot summer day. I could live in a place with a hot climate. I would enjoy that. Of course, when you are in a place with a hot climate, there are more bugs than in places with cooler climates. I don't care for bugs. Where I live, it is very humid. The heat and moisture combine to make it uncomfortable sometimes. It is nicer when the heat is high, but the humidity is low. It would be better if I lived somewhere where it was hot, but not humid. That would be just perfect. Jobs. There are many different jobs that you can choose from. You can be a doctor or a nurse. You could work in a hospital or doctor's office. You might be a firefighter and put out fires. A policeman enforces the law. An actor plays roles on stage or in the movies. You could drive a taxi or be the pilot of an airplane. What kinds of things do you like to do? You might want to be a sales clerk in a store. Maybe you are good at a sport. You could be a baseball player or a hockey player. Being a dentist is a good job. A dentist fixes teeth. If you are good at arguing, you might want to be a lawyer. Do you like to fix people's hair? You could be a hairdresser or a barber. If you are good with your hands, you might want to be a carpenter or a mechanic. If you like to travel, you could be a stewardess or a travel agent. You could be a teacher or a photographer. Are you artistic or creative? You might want to be an artist or a writer. You could work on construction and build houses. You could look after animals and be a veterinarian. If you like to cook, you could be a cook or a chef. There are so many places to work and so many jobs to do. Maybe you could fix computers or work in a library. You could wash windows or be the captain of a ship. There is no limit to what you can be. My friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour, showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms, where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane. 
how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem, and I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem. Star is very beautiful. It shoots across the sky, leaving a long trail of colorful stardust. Shooting stars seem to brighten up the whole sky. They usually seem quite close to Earth. Have you ever watched the stars and got the urge to reach out and touch them, or even join them in their secret dance? I wonder what it'd be like to see a star up close. Would it look like the moon? Maybe one day, when I am older, I will go up in a rocket ship and visit the dancing stars in the midnight sky. Christmas. In December, Christmas comes. We get a holiday from school, and our parents get a few days off from work. Our family gets ready for Christmas by decorating the house. We decorate inside and out. On the outside of the house, we put up lights that twinkle and glow.
We have a wooden Santa Claus and a reindeer set that my father puts up on the roof. Inside, we put up a Christmas tree. Some years, we have a real tree. Real pine trees smell nice, but you have to be careful that they don't dry out and start a fire. This year, we have an artificial tree. We hang tinsel and ornaments on the tree. We also hang strands of light on the tree and put a star at the top. Everyone thinks that the tree is beautiful when we turn on the lights. We place gifts under the tree. There is a gift for me under the tree. It is wrapped in red paper and it has a big green bow on it. Red and green are the Christmas colors. On Christmas Eve, my brother and sister and I will hang our stockings near the fireplace. Santa Claus comes down the chimney and fills our stockings full of toys and goodies. On Christmas morning, it is exciting to see what Santa has left for you. My mother will make a big turkey dinner for us on Christmas Day. We have lots of vegetables and good-tasting foods to go with the turkey. We will have dessert too. Some of my family like Christmas pudding, but I will just have ice cream. Last year, some carolers came to the door. It was snowing outside. They stood in the snow and sang Christmas carols to us. My father gave them some money, and my mother gave them some hot chocolate to warm them up. They had lovely voices, and they sang some of my favorite carols. We also collect food, gifts, and money for some of the people in town who cannot afford to have Christmas. My family is collecting things for a poor family who live near here. We had fun deciding which toys to buy for the children in that family. It was a good feeling to share with people who do not have as much as you do. My parents have always taught us that Christmas is a time for giving, not receiving. I think they're right. Places to live. I live in a house. My house is in a town. My uncle lives in an apartment building. His apartment building is in a busy city. My cousin lives in a dormitory in a school. He shares his room with a classmate. My uncle lives out in the country. He lives on a farm. The police caught a criminal. Now the criminal lives in prison. When I go to summer camp, I live in a tent. When my parents go on vacation, they live in a motel or a hotel. A motel only has one or two floors. A hotel usually has many floors. My aunt and uncle live in a trailer. They like to move around from place to place. My friends live in a cottage by a lake. My grandfather lives in a retirement home. Many people who are about the same age as he live there. I would like to live in a palace. I think you have to be a king or a queen or a prince or a princess to live in a palace. Life in outer space. People have often wondered about whether or not there is life beyond the planet Earth. For years, the idea of intelligent life on other planets has been very popular. Many books and movies tell stories of what those forms of life might be like. Many scientists believe that very simple forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. Under the right conditions, simple life forms might arise. Those conditions, which include moisture and warmth, might occur in many parts of the universe. Fewer scientists believe that very intelligent forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. For intelligent life to evolve, a very long period of time is needed. During that time, the conditions on a planet must not be too harsh. Otherwise, the evolving life forms will die. The amount of water, heat, and various chemicals must be just right. If not, then complex life might never evolve. The conditions needed for intelligent life to evolve are very unlikely to occur on any one planet. However, some scientists believe that intelligent life might be common in the universe. Because there are so many stars and planets in the universe, 